Nearly 20 years ago, we had an illegal migrant on a flight about to be sent to the... Well, sent the hell out of our country, to be frank. But his deportation was blocked by a do-gooder cabin crew from Air France, no less. Fast forward to today, and that same migrant has just pleaded guilty to the rape of a 15-year-old British girl. So, meet Anisette Maella. Here he is. As you can see, he became a poster boy for the anti-deportation movement and campaigners after using human rights laws to fight his return to the Republic of the Congo. Maella arrived in the UK in 2004 after paying an agent to smuggle him out of East Africa, where he claimed his life was at risk. In May 2005, he was put on a flight back to the Congan capital, Brazzaville, but the crew prevented the jet's takeoff from Southampton amid claims deportation minders had taped Maella's legs together and handcuffed him, breaking his hand. So just to reiterate, the airline that thwarted the Home Office that day was Air France. How appropriate, bearing in mind what's going on now with the small boats crisis. A month later, Maella won leave to remain in the UK, where, as you've already heard, he would go on to rape a 15-year-old teenage girl. So let's bring up that image of him again. Where is he? There we go. Migrants are not criminals. There he is, protesting in a scene that open border fanatics would undoubtedly get behind. Around his neck, as you can see, for radio listeners, reads a sign, migrants are not criminals. Let's be honest, the vast majority of migrants aren't criminals, but that guy definitely was. He was a dangerous sex attacker, in fact, and we had him on a one-way ticket back to his home country until a bunch of lefty social justice warriors thought they knew better. And here's a shock for you. They didn't. Let's get some reaction now from Conservative MP for East Worthing and Shoreham, Tim Lawson. Actually, Tim, you're my former MP. Very sad to see you're standing down, actually, but I'll ask you about that at the end. In the case of this, I was about to call him a gentleman, but he's not a gentleman. In the case of this man, Tim, left the protesters, and it was actually Air France cabin crew, believe it or not, stopped him leaving the country, thwarted the democratic process, thwarted the British justice system, and he was allowed to stay in the UK and go on to rape. This is an absolute scandal. And let me say, it's not the only case either. I think that's the point, Ben. I mean, this happened quite a while ago, and now he's gone on to uh, offend. The real issue is that this is not an isolated incident, and we've had many more, more recent uh, cases where not just cabin crew, but even passengers have uh, have intervened to uh, stop somebody being uh, deported who's got a criminal uh, record, who's got absolutely no right to be in the country. It's legitimately they are being uh, deported and they've been taken off a plane. We've had Labour MPs signing letters petitioning for various people not to be deported who then turn out to be criminals and commit criminal acts as uh, as well. So. He's absolutely right in that sign, which there's migrants are not criminals, but some are. He was, and he shouldn't have been allowed to commit his criminal acts in this country when he was legitimately going to be deported. So Robert Jenrick, the former immigration minister, he was speaking last night and he said that, uh, to quote, the UK needs a more robust policy uh, because a handful of symbolic flights to East Africa, talking about Rwanda, uh, we're moving on to the small boats issue, uh, wasn't going to be a good enough deterrent. Tim, why can't we just behave like a normal country? Australia did it in the mid-2000s with Tony Abbott and turn back the boats mid-water, humanely, by the way, putting them into uh, very safe life vessels, uh, lifeboat vessels and either sending them back to where they came from or to offshore processing sites? Uh, if only. And it's a very different situation to... Uh, Australia. Now, like it or not, we play by the uh, the rules. When boats leave French shores, and more needs to be done by the French to stop them leaving French shores, or if they do leave uh, French shores, they should be intercepted at sea and brought back to those French shores. So it becomes a completely expensive round trip for migrants paying people smugglers only to be returned to French beaches. That would absolutely kill off this trade stone, stone dead, but the French won't cooperate in, in doing that, which is the nub of this problem. Once those boats come into British territorial waters, like it or not, they become our responsibility. And it's incredible, frankly, given the danger of what's gone on in the channel, that more people haven't lost their lives. It's down to the, uh, the, the good services and the bravery of many of our uh, lifeboat, uh, border force, um, uh, Coast Guard and others who, who bring them to the UK as we are duty bound 
under international law, like it or not, to do. Just as, frankly, the French are duty-bound under international maritime law to intercept those boats because crimes are being committed by paying people smugglers and criminal gangs yeah. to try and get them into the into the country. Frankly, it might be a, a nice, sound a nice idea. You cannot try and turn those boats around uh, at, at sea because then there would be casualties. They shouldn't be leaving the French shores in the first place. Right, Tim, I, I know from first-hand experience, you're a good MP, you've held your seat for a number of years. You announced you're stepping down a couple of days ago. You won't be standing at the next election. Is it anything to do with the... I mean, are you embarrassed about the way your party has handled not just illegal migration, but legal migration. You've had total control over it, yet you've allowed the city, a city the size of Birmingham, every two years to, to come into this country. The services aren't sufficient enough to support them. People, I mean, Brits can't get dentist appointments, they can't get GP appointments, school appointments, no one can buy a house anymore. Uh, are you embarrassed and ashamed by the Tories' record on migration? Uh, no, and that hyperbole doesn't help the, uh, the situation. There are two factors. Is it hyperbole? First, there is illegal migration, uh, which we need to be able to do more. But we are in this ridiculous situation where people are paying people smugglers to come across the channel. And once they're in British territorial waters, they are our responsibility. And where you've got people who then cannot be returned to their home country, they come from countries like Iran, Eritrea, where they physically will not let them off the plane. That's when we have a problem. That's why the government is putting so much effort into this Rwanda scheme as a way of getting people out of the country to a third territory, which will be a deterrent. And we've seen why that will be a deterrent, because I think first select committee I sit on have been to France and we've, we've, we've seen what it can, uh, can do. There is an issue with high levels of uh, migration. Again, the government yeah. is taking steps to reduce that, largely because the dependents are coming with people we need in this country, bringing a lot of dependents who, frankly, mm -hmm. uh, don't have a place to be in the country. That is being reduced. But okay. we also depend on quite a lot of migrant labour in our essential services as well. We need to get the balance right. No, I'm not embarrassed, because we're actually doing something uh, about it, because okay. everyone else has just right. cried foul and said this is a disgrace, but come up with no practical solutions, which is what this government is trying to do.